next speaker went from recreational skier to Olympic Winter Games in only four years. In the pursuit of a gold medal, he rocketed down the mountain 135 miles an hour on skis. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Hall of Fame speaker, New York Times best-selling author, Olympian. Make some noise for Vince Pacinti. We're standing on the side of a 42 degree slope. The sport is speed skiing. It's the gold medal run in the Olympic Games. It's at about 100 miles an hour, it starts to get very difficult because the air is pushing the body all around. The skis are going bop, 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 like that. Don't worry, I won't fall off the chair. I'm a professional. <laughs> Finally, you see that speed trap cross the first beat, cross the second beat. There's a cool part, stand up. Boom, blast the bear in the chest. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And then it hits you that adrenaline rush. That, wow, I want to do that again. Wow, I want to do that again. Wow, I want to do that again. <laughs> Welcome to Dallas. How do we compete? Well, this is your job. Because typically, we want to do what the competition's not doing. And at this very moment, the competition's trying to do what you're not doing. And if you change your mind about who your competition is and do what that person's not willing to do, you end up with innovative solutions that can cascade through this entire organization. Your job is to do what the competition is not willing to do. What are they not willing to do? Typically, those are the things you're not willing to do either. I'm not here to make you feel good the whole time, <laughs> right? I want you to look in the stealth honesty mirror and say, what am I not willing to do? A story when I was training with the national team coach. So we're in a gymnasium and the coach set out a rope. He said, I want you to walk the length of this rope. The best skiers in the world could not get past the second step. We got on the rope and then back and forth and then could not stay on the rope. And the coach said, stop. What I want you to do is focus on a point on the wall and do not take your eyes off that point on the wall. First athlete, up there, back, up, down, look. And this is stop. Stop looking at your feet. They will always be at the end of your legs. <laughs> the rope will always be under your feet. Do not take your eyes off that point on the wall. And as soon as the first athlete picked a point and walked the length of that rope, in 10 minutes, 22 people not only were able to walk the length of the rope by focusing on that point, we figured out how to turn around, look at another point, and walk the other way. Now, did we have a change in skill, ability? No, <laughs> we had the same skill we had 10 minutes prior. We had a change in focus. Here are two facts for your business, absolute facts. You'll gravitate towards your current dominant thought, and you'll gravitate to that which you believe to be true. There's something called repetition bias. If we repeat something enough time, we will have a bias. Another way to say that, you'll gravitate to that which you believe to be true. And so to stay the course, use something called gold dots. And the idea is to put the gold dot in places where it would just stand out. It's basically a trigger. And the emotional buzz was, I'm the fastest speed screen in Canada, top 10 in the world. Every time you see your cell phone, you see the gold dot. You see that, you go, oh, I'd love to have that. See a gold dot, oh, I'd love to have that. This is a fundamentally important question, a competitive advantage. There's a mountain in front of you, you can't get past it. And then you realize, wait a minute, do what the competition is not willing to do. So I found a friend with a really fast car. <laughs> Got my pink rubber suit, Now it was pink because it was free. Darth Vader style helmet, got on top of the friend's car, bindings facing up on the ski rack, clicked into the bindings, boom, 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 took off down the road. At 100 miles an hour on top of your friend's car, you start to learn a lot. <laughs> a lot about people, actually. People coming the other way. Because you're looking at them, they're looking at you, and you realize they think you're luggage. So, you're staring down the side of this mountain, you want to be the shape of a bullet. That's right, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet. And then I remember to have what? Fun. Looked at Tom the French, started giving nod, and he says... Ready? Go! <laughs> Whatever. Now, Tom has a 60-second stopwatch. If it hits 61 seconds, then it'll beep, 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 very loud. Tom will stand in front of you and go, you're disqualified, out of the way. Okay, pick the line, that's right, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet. Have fun, just about to leave, and bam, right over here a guy starts screaming. The guy's screaming, his nickname is Pig. 
You don't know how much of the 60 seconds you'd eaten up, so picked up the skis, slapped on the deck before I knew it was on, talking out loud to myself, Vince, get focused, that's right, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet, I'm a bullet, I'm a pig, I'm a pig. <laughs> then I started to think, well, you are wearing a pink suit. <laughs> and you know how you give yourself the giggles? I'm thinking, the pig on skis. <laughs> I'm thinking about this pig thing laughing away and all you can hear when people are standing beside the track is ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and then remembered where I was. No, and I'd blown it. Got to the finish area and underneath it was flashing new national record friends and media running over and I'm thinking, I was a pig. <laughs> On the count of three, you ready to commit? <laughs> One, two, Three, commit, point your skis downhill, get into a tuck. All right, you're picking up speed, 60 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, 125 miles an hour. And as you're rocketing down this mountain, you're holding, maintaining that tuck. And as you look at that point, your first beam, second beam, boom. The mountain you set out to conquer is now behind you. You look over and see how well you did. But most importantly, you see your family waiting for you. And when you've done that hero's climb, that Olympic journey, you can't help but feel I want to do that again. Go. A medal.